How's it going, fellas? My name's Andy, and today we're gonna take a look at the Velisca Axe Murders. The biggest unsolved murder in history. You know, usually when we look through all of the murders and mass killings throughout history, there are usually some events that lead up to it, and eventually the suspect is finally caught. But that's not what happened here. The Velisca Axe Murders happened over 100 years ago, in 1912. And up until this day, the murderer or murderers have never been found. On top of that, the evidence was very, very thin. The murders happened in the blink of an eye. On the night of June 9th, 1912, in the town of Villisca, Iowa, eight people were killed in one house. All eight of them were found dead with severe wounds to the head, which was later found out to be from an axe. The family who lived there was the Moore family. The father and mother were Josiah and Sarah Moore, and they had four children who were all under the age of 12. Herman, Mary, Arthur, and Paul. At the time of the murder, there were also two house guests living in their home, Lena and Ina Stillinger, who were 12 and 8 years old respectively. So, this murder was pretty crazy. The parents and six children in total were brutally killed. Everyone in the town knew about the Moore family, and they were very well liked. They were one of the wealthiest families in the area, which was definitely a red flag. That probably had something to do with the murderer's intentions. Anyway, what happened was, the Stillinger sisters were part of the church the Moore family went to, so on June 9th, they were invited to stay over at their house, which they did. At around 10 o'clock p.m., they arrived at the Moore's house and proceeded to go to bed. Then, by 7 a.m. the next day, June 10th, one of their neighbors knocked on their door, worried because the Moore family is usually up very early to do morning chores. The neighbor entered into the house and found eight dead bodies, all in the bedrooms. On the floor, there was an axe covered in blood, which belonged to Josiah. It was assumed that the murderer took Josiah's axe and used it to murder him and everyone else in the house while they were sleeping. Josiah himself got the worst of it. His face was slashed up, his eyes were missing, and there was way more blood on his body than anyone else's. Probably because he tried to put up a fight against the killer. After the investigations, this is a list of things that were found at the crime scene. The estimated time of death was shortly after midnight, and there are some pretty interesting things here. If this murder happened today, I think the investigators and forensics would be able to leverage the clues to find out who the killer was. But since it happened over 100 years ago, and the technology wasn't as sophisticated, it just didn't work out. Fingerprint and DNA testing were in its very early stages. Some of these clues say how all the doors were still locked, the chimney was sealed off, the curtains were all drawn open. At the time, the investigations led to the belief that the killer was hiding inside the house for the Moore family to return home, and then made his move after they fell asleep. Then, after he was done, he escaped through the chimney. That was the assumption they came to, and there were six main suspects. Suspect number one was Iowa Senator Frank Jones. He was living in Villisca at the time and owned a hardware and farm business, with Josiah Moore as one of the employees. But later on, Josiah would leave and open his own business, which competed with Jones and took a lot of his customers away from him. Josiah also apparently had a sexual affair with Jones' daughter-in-law, but that was not proven. I guess he was a suspect mainly because the investigation officials believed that there could have been some bad blood between the two. But there wasn't any evidence at all that he was the killer. It was all just speculation, pretty much. Suspect number two was a man named Reverend George Kelly. He was an Englishman traveling in the States for a short period of time. On June 8th, a day before the murder, he attended an event in town that the Moore family was also attending. Then, apparently he left town on June 10th, a few hours after the murder supposedly happened. Yeah, that seems a bit suspicious. The thing is, George Kelly was described as being a weird guy. After he left town, he wrote many letters to the police and investigators regarding this murder case, because he was fascinated by it. Which was... which was kind of strange. He only stayed in town for a couple of days, yet he claimed to have witnessed the crime. It can't just be one huge coincidence. However, George Kelly actually had a mental illness, so it's very possible that he was the murderer, but it's also possible that all of the details he gave to the police were just made up. 
About two years after the Velisca murders happened, George was arrested for sexual harassment, and then another couple of years later, he returned to the town and confessed to the police that he was responsible for the murders. But then, after a few interrogations, George took back what he said and claimed that he was lying, and after a trial, he was acquitted. So yeah, I guess he wasn't the killer, and just like with the first suspect, there was no evidence either. Suspect number three was Andrew Sawyer. He worked as a pile driver in a nearby town and happened to be in Villisca at the time of the murder. Some witnesses thought that he was suspicious because he had experience using an axe. But Sawyer had an alibi and he was able to prove to the police that he was out of town when the Moore family got murdered, so he was off the hook as well. Suspect number four was William Blackie Mansfield, a convicted serial killer. Not to be confused with Billy Manfield, who was a different serial killer. This was perhaps the most interesting case and closest one to conviction. The investigators believed that he was hired by the first suspect, Senator Jones, to kill the Moore family. Mansfield was known for committing his murders with an axe, and he was responsible for a couple of axe murders in the Kansas area a few days before this happened. And a few years after the Villisca murder, Mansfield killed his wife's family with an axe as well. The shocking part was that all of his murders were committed the same way, with the same technique, and it matched the way the Moore family got killed too. He was arrested and testified, but the jury had a hard time believing that he could commit those murders in Kansas, and then go to Iowa and kill the Moore family a few days later. Mansfield also had an alibi who said he was in Illinois at the time of the murder, although the alibi has been disputed by a local restaurant owner who saw Mansfield in Iowa, but he had no proof that it was him. Either way, he was released and he was not convicted of doing it. Suspect number 5 was Henry Lee Moore, who was not related to the Moore family, but he was also a convicted axe murderer, who murdered his own mother and grandmother. He lived in Iowa too, and he became a suspect in the same manner as Mansfield, but just like him, there was no evidence linking him to the case. Suspect number 6 was a man named Joe Ricks. There aren't any pictures available of him, but apparently he was visiting the town and asked some people where the Moore family lived. Then, a few days later, he was arrested in Monmouth, Illinois after he stepped off a train because he had blood all over his shoes. There were some suspicions about him, but nothing came of it. And those were the six main suspects. A few of them were arrested and testified, but at the end of the day, none of them were convicted of the Villisca murders. Over the next few decades, a few more suspicions surfaced with criminals claiming that they were responsible, but it was all just noise. No evidence, no proof, nothing. And up until today, the identity of the real killer has not been found. Maybe it was one of those suspects that I mentioned earlier, but they got away. But either way, all of them have passed away since then, so we'll never know. Today, the house that the Moore family lived in is still there. It got renovated a couple of times since then, and it's become a landmark. Located on 508 East 2nd Street, Villisca, Iowa, it's officially known as the Villisca Axe Murder House. Over the last few decades, it changed ownership a couple of times, and people have even said that they've seen some paranormal activity in the house. Like, it was haunted. Anyway, that sums up the story of the Villisca Axe Murders. The biggest unsolved murder case in history. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed that video and I'll see you next time. Peace.